this looks like a job for Superman. Hey everybody, Reds the Collector here with another DC Collectibles statue review. Today we're taking a look at the Superman Batman bookends, of course produced by DC Collectibles. Um, just want to go ahead and start and say that this is an amazing piece. Um, I'm sure that maybe there's somebody out there that actually uses them for bookends, but I of course don't. They're uh, displayed in my display cabinets. Uh, they are of course based on the art of Jim Lee. Uh, obviously we've seen these statues quite a few times uh, in other productions from DC Collectibles. Uh, I think there's like three versions of the Superman at least. There's the large, large version. Uh, there is the uh, smaller, there's the uh, re-edition, um, and there may even be like a bronze one. I can't remember really at, at this time, but uh, they have actually put these statues out quite a few times. Uh, generally, it's just uh, the hero and the gargoyle. With the bookends, of course, they added the back piece, and the back piece is amazing. Uh, now, I actually don't own any of those other uh, productions or any of those other pieces uh, of the Jim Lee artwork in this style. Um, these are my first ones, and actually these are the ones that I, I only feel the need to own. Uh, of course, if I ever found the other ones at a really, really great deal, I wouldn't pass it up. Uh, but I don't feel the need to go out and search for those because I have these. And uh, like I said, they are amazing pieces to own. So right quick, we're going to take a look at the box. Uh, obviously, we're looking at the front of the box. Uh, we got the standard DC Collectibles box there with the fold-over page, this time in blue. Uh, of course, blue is the color of Superman. Batman's, I believe all his are gray. So, but they chose to go with blue on here. Excuse me, trying not to sneeze. I don't know why every time I do a video, I've got to sneeze. All right, now as you can see, uh, it does say DC Comics in the lower right hand corner. And then of course, Batman and Superman. Uh, and then we look over in the top left, uh, as always, we've got the DC Collectibles logo. Now, rotating the box, we've got a very, very nice side image of the Superman, um, basically. So you can't really even see the background there. It's just a wonderful image of that J Lee. <laughs> Jim Lee uh, statue. Uh, very, very nice, beautiful little picture there. Uh, coming around to the back, we of course have both statues and uh, of course it's being used as bookends on the back here. Uh, of course there's a little right up there based on the artwork created by uh, Selen Un, Uni, uh, illustration by Jim Lee. Uh, yeah. That, and under that it says sculpted by uh, Tim Bruckner and Adam Ross. Uh, Tim, of course, did the Superman one, um, and Adam must have done the Batman, or maybe Tim did both the, the heroes and Adam did uh, the back pieces. Uh, but either way, uh, anything that is associated with Tim Bruckner is basically a must own. The man is a master sculptor. Uh, so if you're looking for a Superman statue, you know, maybe your first one, uh, anything that has Tim Bruckner associated with it is going to be an amazing quality piece. So there we've got that back shot showing both uh, Superman and Batman and uh, some great uh, books in between. Um, I think I have a couple of those, but uh, definitely... Uh, great reads. So if you want to take take a pause and take a look and maybe write those down, uh, each one of those is a really, really awesome read. Coming over to the other side of the box, I'm assuming we've got a very nice portrait of Batman. Ah, and we do. Uh, very, very nice. Now, one thing that I find actually kind of odd is uh, they gave Batman the white background and they gave Superman the darker background. Uh, it's generally the other way. Superman is more of the, the hero in the light and Batman is the uh, dark knight. Uh, maybe they did it because his cape is black and it would have really blended in because even the Superman one is, is pretty dark there, uh, not reflecting a whole lot of light. So they probably did that so you could actually see Batman. Uh, of course, again, we have DC Collectibles in the logo, uh, which you can't see, but uh, right there. DC Collectibles, of course, uh, the address. Address. Wow, guys, I really can't talk. 
uh, address in Burbank, California. Address, geez. Uh, and then, of course, up top, we have the approximate measurements of 8.75 inches high. And then, of course, that leads us back to the front of the box. Now, all the DC collectibles boxes at the top, on their top flap, always have uh, the Heroes logo. So, of course, on this one, we have both Superman and Batman logos on the top of the box. That is it for the box. Now, for the statues themselves. Forgive me while I kind of get this all set up here. The box is pretty big and took up quite a bit of my review space room. So... Let's get this set back up. And forgive me for the delay, but here we go. We've got the Dark Knight himself. And my favorite, of course, the Man of Tomorrow. Uh, now, I want to take a look at these individually. So we're actually going to start with Batman. We're going to go ahead and slide Superman over here. So everybody has seen this uh, statue before. Uh, basically, again, it's that Jim Lee uh, artwork it's based off of. Give that a little bit of shakiness as I adjust my tripod. Uh, but the statue is just amazing in and of itself. You've got that big, beautiful bat symbol. Uh, you've got that stern Batman, that nice squared off heroic jaw. Uh, you've got that very nice uh, big utility belt that actually looks like he can carry something. Uh, the muscle structure is incredibly well done. Uh, you have the very nice uh, gargoyle eagle. And of course that cape is amazing. I love the, the style and the sculpt they get on these capes. Uh, it really makes it feel uh, like it's actually in motion. It doesn't feel like a, a static piece. It, it feels like that wind is actually catching the cape. Uh, and that, I can tell you, being a very, very amateurish sculptor myself, uh, is an extremely difficult effect to get and uh, had them having done that is just beautiful on this piece now of course I mentioned that he's standing on a gargoyle on top of a building uh, or on a ledge or what have you uh, this is a standard pose for Batman and Superman uh, they are uh, building guys uh, so often in the comics you see them standing on a building or standing on a, a gargoyle such as this. Uh, it's actually much more common, I think, for Batman to be seen like this as it, than Superman. Uh, but of course they both look beautiful in these statues. Now one thing you'll notice is that I was able to just pick this guy right up off the base. Uh, basically there are magnets in here, which is really, really awesome. So it just magnetizes itself right to the base gets it very very nice and stable let me try and get some uh, focus in here and it allows you to display this in any number of ways uh, you can kind of center him you can put him off to the side uh, if you are doing using it as a book end then you can go ahead and turn them to the side like this uh, so it would be very nice to hold your books in place um, I actually, when I display this, I have the Mattel uh, Damian Wayne Robin on here with him because it's a kind of a perfect uh, in scale. He just stands right here uh, and it's, you know, it's really, really nice in scale. Looks really, really cool together. Uh, but really the, because we've seen these statues before, really the, the shining uh, part of these uh, bookends is the backdrop. It is just beautifully done. Uh, looking at, at Batman's, uh, we've got the nice uh, square tile here, looking rooftop. Um, but the really thing that gets me the most is you can see all of this ivy. All of these leaves are beautifully, beautifully sculpted. I and mean, it really, really adds... <laughs> I'm trying to think of a great word here, but it really, really adds... a. a an extra step, an extra level uh, of cool, I guess, to the to the statue itself. I'm sorry, guys. Again, I, my brain is uh, just uh, apparently full of holes today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a drink because my mouth is drying up, so I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I am back. Uh, now, of course, any of you that uh, are frequent uh, watchers of my videos, you know that I don't do a whole lot of editing. I kind of let the, the video be natural and basically out there if I make a mistake I correct myself I don't edit it out um, 
And there are a lot, a lot of amazing reviewers out there who do some very, very cool editing. Uh, and their videos are amazing. I could, you know, name 10 of them off the top of my head. But you guys, if you found my videos, you've definitely seen theirs. Um, they do a lot of editing and they just make the process look professional. Uh, me, on the other hand, I go for more of the, uh, the natural, uh, somebody just trying to get across to you how awesome this is. And me personally, one, I'm not a very good editor. Two, I don't really have uh, very good editing software. And three, I, I like the organic feel of this. So if I have something like I got to take a drink or something like that, I apologize. Uh, but it uh, isn't going to get edited out. <laughs> so as I was saying, the backdrop on these statues just takes it up to a whole nother level. Um, I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer, see if we can get some nice focus on here. And look at the sculpting that went into that ivy. That is just phenomenal. Uh, and it's such delicate, delicate little leaves. Uh, the sculptor, who I'm assuming it was Tim on these, uh, or could be the Adam guy, uh, just did such an amazing job. I love that bat symbol. Um, and that's one thing I actually got to say about Batman is, um, and all of Batman's merchandise, basically, uh, there's some shirts that just have the, the symbol like it is on the statue, uh, just the, uh, just the bat there. But on all of Batman's basically merchandise, such as, you know, the logos that are mostly put on things, it almost always has the yellow ellipse around it. And I really like the yellow ellipse. Of course, that was my Batman growing up. My Batman had that. Uh, yellow oval around the bat symbol and I almost kind of wonder uh, why DC still uses that logo but in the comics and movies and statues uh, for the most part anything that's modern uh, just has that straight bat without the yellow ellipse around it uh, this of course looks like it was designed with the yellow ellipse and I love that that's my favorite bat symbol it's clean it's symmetrical um, it's the bat symbol of my generation so uh, I really, really loved seeing that on there. Uh, it looks just phenomenal on there. Uh, coming out in that course, it is raised up, so that is amazing. I love all the distressed work on the bricks here, uh, the way that it comes up to the point, uh, the actual separation of the bricks, uh, how thick the base is. Um, of course, we've just got the DC Comics logo on the bottom, or just DC Comics, not actually a logo. Uh, but just an amazing, amazing addition to this statue. This in and of itself is incredibly cool. And I could see myself if, uh, you know, I ever had the money and whatnot, if uh, they had just released these, I could see myself just picking these up because they are that cool and they are that much of a, a representation of the character themselves. And you'll see that when we take a, a deeper look at the Superman statue. Uh, of course, you've got the differences between Metropolis and Gotham, uh, and they are basically the epitome of their heroes. Uh, Batman is, of course, a darker, grittier character. Um, he's rough around the edges, uh, you want to say. And uh, his city basically mirrors that, or I guess you would really say that he mirrors his city. Uh, so you've got that really nice look in the Batman version. So we're going to go ahead now and, uh, well, actually, let's take a look at the back here. And they didn't, uh, they really didn't uh, cut any corners because you could see uh, the Batman symbol on the back. And actually, you could see how this one is indented, almost like somebody, you know, took it and pushed the bricks forward to make that bat symbol on the front. So very, very, very cool. Uh, the Batman, of course, as you see, uh, he is, uh, you know, a very standard Batman. He's got the, the smaller uh, points on his cowl, which I always preferred. There was a time when DC Comics was uh, basically having a test with itself for artists were, uh, I don't know, had a bet going to see who could make uh, Batman's uh, ear pieces on the cowl the longest. And it was so ridiculous in some of those comics uh, in the Bronze Age that, uh, I mean, it was just crazy. There was no way that he'd be able to go through a doorway, much less sit in a Batmobile or anything like that, because the points would be, you know, way, way, way up. They'd be, in some, in some uh, artist renditions, they'd be like almost two and a half, three feet long. And it was crazy. So I do like seeing that, uh, that muted, understated points. I mean, they're still there, 
uh, but it's not crazy like we had seen before. So, okay, let's go ahead and slide him over here and let's bring in the big boy. Of course, uh, everybody knows, if you're watching my videos, you know that I am a Superman collector. Uh, my primary collection is about Superman. Of course, I do have a small amount of Batman stuff. I do have uh, basically uh, most of the Crime Syndicate releases. I had them all at one point, but I did uh, pare that down and uh, sold some off to get some new things. Uh, and of course, I've got, I've got uh, basically, I have a Batman shelf, and I have a Villains shelf, and I have a Justice League shelf. Uh, so I've got those three shelves that are dedicated to something other than Superman in DC Comics. And then I have another uh, area in one of my display cases that's Star Wars. Everything else in my collection is, of course, Superman. Uh, and it's, it's awesome to see. I mean, not to toot my own horn, there's people out there that have collections that make mine look like, you know, something I found in a garbage can. Uh, and, you know, that just, just blow my collection away. But uh, I got to say, when I do come in this room, it does bring a smile on my face to be able to look around and see my hero looking back at me from every angle. Again, I'm going on a rant, guys. I apologize. It happens quite a bit. Uh, if you're new to my videos, I apologize because I do rant quite a bit. Uh, I've actually cut it down on this video to what it normally is. But let's go ahead and get back into the statue itself. All right, again, beautiful Jim Lee statue uh, done in the metallic paint scheme. Very, very similar to the uh, Man of Steel statues that were produced by DC Collectibles that are actually uh, just ending now with the Darwin Cook. Uh, which is very sad and i actually talk about that more in my cully hamner video so if you want to learn more about that one you can go ahead and watch that video uh but of course again this is that uh, jim lee artwork uh very short cape for superman uh no s in any way on the back of the cape uh again the sculpting done an amazing job i love this uh little fold here uh, how deep this one is it really again looks like it's an organic movement uh caught in the wind and then, of course, we got, like I said, that metallic uh, paint scheme to it. Big, beautiful S on the front. Uh, cool, cool thing with the hair. I mean, we've got that, uh, the hair whipping in the wind, and it is, you know, something you'd think would be very de delicate. And I, of course, wouldn't want to drop these, uh, but it is, a, you know, a nice sturdy sculpt on there. Uh, you've got the really great Superman face sculpt. The only thing I would say is I'm not a huge fan of the almost Spock like eyebrows on here. Um, I don't understand why they're like pointed up. Uh, again, that's Jim Lee's artwork and he is a great artist. At, that's just the only thing that really bothers me is those, uh, those eyebrows there. Everything else in the statue I just, I just absolutely love. Um, of course we've got the classic Superman in his classic red undies with his yellow belt. Uh, coming down, we, of course, got a very, very stylized uh, and clean eagle, unlike that Batman, uh, where it was gritty and deteriorating and something that looks like it had been there for 100 years. Uh, Superman's looks like it was just built yesterday or hasn't been built yet. It's the, the eagle of the future, if you will. Um, but just a beautiful sculpture to go along with that Batman to stand side by side with him. Now, of course, like I've said, we have seen... Uh, that Superman statue plenty, plenty of times um, in the other releases of that Jim Lee version. And the real uh, eye catcher, uh, the real, uh, ah, can't even think of the word. The real draw to this set is, again, these backdrops. These backdrops are just beautiful. And you can, again, see the difference between Batman and Superman really really comes forward uh, in these backdrops. I'm just going to go ahead and move this up real quick. I'm going to take Batman off here so that we can see that basically the differences between Superman and Batman are highly illustrated uh, in these backdrops where you have the crumbling stone, uh, a deteriorated look for Batman. For Superman, you've got this beautiful, symmetrical, uh, everything looks like it's relatively new, but with a, uh, almost with a, like a, a classic theme to it, but doesn't look like it's, you know, old and deteriorating. So moving this boat back, we've of course got the beautiful S symbol here, which is amazing. Uh, we've got the pointed triangle here. You see a lot of uh, Metropolis uh, 
buildings in the comic books, and I believe the Daily Planet itself, you see this architecture a lot, uh, be it cartoons, comics, uh, what have you. That that's something that's that's pretty consistent throughout most of them. Um, so it was great that they brought that into this. And then of course we've got uh, the I don't know would be with these be vents. I'm assuming. So we've got the nice vents here. Uh, you can see where everything is riveted, uh, especially on the bottom part of the stand itself. Uh, those are very cool looking rivets there. Um, again, a, a lot more clean lines than what we saw with Batman. Of course, it looks great from the side, it looks great from the front, and it looks great from the back even. Uh, unlike Batman, this, is, this one is also kind of raised up, uh, nowhere to extend the way it is on the front. But whereas Batman looks like uh, it was basically pushed forward from the back of the statue, uh, this looks like it's uh, just a whole separate piece or maybe just one large piece put in there that was supposed to stand out further from the statue itself. So these really are the, the main part of the statue that should be a draw for a lot of collectors, especially if you already own uh, the Jim Lee versions of these two heroes. Um, Trying to pick them up again, I know that that would really bother a lot of people, but uh, getting these parts of it, the stands, uh, would make it totally worth it. I know it's, it's not exactly a uh, cheap statue set, um, but these two here, they, they really, really uh, make this set something special. And you can, you know, uh, just put them over to the side because they are extremely uh, well balanced and sturdy you can put them uh, in your collection the Superman and Batman in your collection without having to put them on these stands and you can use the stands for other things uh, now I actually keep them on the stands uh, because they look so so amazing on there as you can see you can hear that thunk there as those magnets uh, really took hold and really do hold this very very nicely as you can see that is just magnets doing that uh, and it's a really really good uh, thing that I, I love from DC I wish they would do that uh, with everything that they provide that comes with a stand that they uh, magnetize it just to make sure that something's not gonna topple over so yeah just looking at these two guys together and I generally keep Batman kind of over to one side so I have uh, room to put that Robin in uh, just looking at these together is just really, really cool. And I realize that uh, I've said that a bunch of times here, but uh, just seeing them like this and the fact that you can rotate them, you can use them as the bookends, but you don't have to have them facing outward from the books. You can rotate them so that they are really a good display piece on top of being bookends. Uh, like I said, guys, I, I generally like to do a very organic video, so there's a lot of uh, ums and such through this thing. I really hope you guys stayed with me throughout the video. Uh, I really appreciate if you did. I know this was kind of a long video. Um, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I, of course, I, I have uh, trouble getting back to everybody when you comment, but I do try to reply to everyone. Uh, if I don't get a reply back to you, it uh, is nothing against you or anything. It just means I just didn't have the time. Uh, but I do try to reply to everyone. Um, of course, I, uh, I put out videos. I had been on a kind of a hiatus, but I'm back now. Um, recently, I've gone ahead and done a collection update video, which has been quite a while since I'd done one of those. Uh, and then I did another review video. And then, of course, uh, we've got this one here, and I'm actually planning to do another one today because uh, I've got a new phone, finally, with a larger memory so I can do uh, some decent size reviews without uh, having to upload one, then delete it from the phone before I can do anything else. But again, off on a tangent, guys, I really want to thank you for sitting with me here and watching this. Hopefully, I didn't annoy you with my starts and stops. Uh, again, please rate, comment, and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching, and as always, have a very nice day.